In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this trippy looking wave effect for your typography. It looks really impressive, but it's actually incredibly easy to make, and I'll show you a few different ways you can style it, so let's take a look. Alright, so to start, let's make a new canvas. So head to File, New, and I'm going to be working with an A4 dimension. Um, so you can create a new document, or if you'd like, I also put together this template which you can download, which has a few colors saved in here already. With your document open, select the text tool by pressing T, and click on your canvas, and type whatever word you want to use. In this case, I'm going to be going with the word Vibe. Now let's scale that up a little. It's about right. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick a font that's very condensed. So I'm going to be using the DIN font, which you can find for free on the Adobe Fonts website. I'll link to that below as well. It's a great condensed font that I really love the look of. It's nice and bold. And you'll want to kind of create around this size of text on your canvas. Something with a little bit of white space around the edges and kind of position it. Something like this. Actually, let's make sure that's perfectly centered. Just head to Align and center it like that. All right, next step, we need to elongate this text. So right click on it and click Create Outlines. Then use the Direct Select tool by clicking A on your keyboard or click up here and select the bottom half of the font like this. And basically just drag it down. And you'll see that's already looking pretty cool. And you wanna make sure that the space at the bottom is about the same as the top and kind of eyeball it. Now, I personally don't love the way that the V gets kind of thin down here, the way that this is stretched. I prefer if this was a uniform size throughout. So I'm going to zoom in here. And again, using the direct select tool, I'm going to click this anchor point and I'm just going to drag it up. Okay, so in this case, it looks like Adobe Illustrator created two anchor points here. So let's drag this one up as well. Let's zoom out. All right, that's looking much better. Now, this is a stylistic choice. Uh, you could choose to leave the top halves of the letters up here at the top. Uh, in this case, I'm going to move the B down to be halfway down. I think it just looks a little cooler and it's a little easier to read. So I'm gonna zoom in. Now, you'll see if you try to do this, again, using the direct select tool, if you select everything like this um, and you try to move it down, you'll see that this whole line on the left moves down as well. So basically the key is you want to select all of these points here without going over the line on the left here. Um, let's try that. Okay, and now try dragging down. This could be a little finicky if you don't get the anchor points correct. Um, just to show you an example, you know, if you don't select it quite right, it can look a little weird, in which case just zoom in and holding shift using the direct select tool again, just deselect or select the points that you need. So let's try that. There we go, perfect. All right, that looks pretty good. I wanna keep it just slightly above, whoops, above halfway. There we go. All right, I'm also gonna add an exclamation mark just to stylize this a little more. Um, and what I'm gonna do is rather than have it on the right, I wanna kind of tuck this into the design just to create a little bit more of an interesting design. So using the same font, gonna make an exclamation mark, right click on it and create outlines and then kind of tuck it in there, size it up so it's about the same width as your text, position it up there and then using the direct selection tool, select all these bottom anchor points and drag them down. Now, I don't love the way that this gets thinner again as we go, so I'm once again gonna zoom in and using the direct selection tool, just move these out just to create a uniform thickness. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. All right, so once you're happy with the way that your text is looking and you know, you've got a nice balanced design, let's start adding the wave effect. So there's a few different ways you can do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a few variations. Uh, well, they're essentially the same way, but you can customize the intensity of the wave effect. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this artboard by hitting Shift O or clicking the uh, artboard tool here on the left and then holding Option and Shift. I'm gonna click and drag this to the right. You'll see it just duplicates the entire artboard. I'm gonna do that again. All right, so then select the first one head to Object, Envelope Distort, and Make with Mesh. Okay, so 
the columns you add, it doesn't really matter how many columns you add in this case, but you're going to want to play around with the amount of rows. Basically, the less rows you add, the bigger the waves and the less waves you'll have, and the more rows you add, the kind of more intense that wave effect. I'll show you in a second. It's easier to show you what I mean. So in this case, let's start with five rows. And this one over here, let's create, let's do the same thing, object, envelope distort, make with mesh. And in this case, let's do 10. Okay, let's start with this one here. Uh, what we're gonna do, again, using the direct selection tool, hit A, and if you kind of mouse over it, you'll see where the rows are. Uh, basically, what you wanna do is click and drag, selecting just a single row, um, the first row, or the second row down from the top. Then holding shift, you wanna select every other row in the design. And what you can then do is use your right key or your left key on your keyboard to start moving things over. And you'll see, as you do, it starts creating this awesome, super trippy design, just like that. Now you can go quite extreme. You can also click and drag this if you want. Um, you can go either direction. I think it looks best when it's kind of like a little wavy, but you can still read the text. So something like that, maybe. There we go, that looks pretty cool. And you'll see now what I mean with the different style when you come over to here, use the direct selection tool. Let's select that second one. And once again, select every other row and repeat the same thing. See, as you can see, it just creates more waves. Each wave will be kind of less strong, um, but it creates just a more intense wavy effect, which is a little harder to read, but it also looks very cool. So just a matter of personal preference, really what you want to go for there. So just like that, super easy way to add a wavy text effect. Now, if you want to take this a little bit further, you could try adding some colors to it. So let's hit Shift O to head to the artboard tool and holding shift, I'm gonna select all three artboards and then holding option, I'm gonna click and drag them down here. All right, I'm then going to head to the rectangle tool or press M on your keyboard and let's create and drag a rectangle across the first layer, then holding command shift left bracket, send it to the back. You can also manually do it by going to object uh, arrange and send to back, but using the shortcut makes life a lot easier. And let's use one of the swatches that I've pre-selected here. Um, that looks pretty cool. Let's also select the text and make that a blue color. That looks pretty cool. Maybe the dark blue might look even better. Nope, I think light blue is looking even better. Uh, another thing you could try doing is adding a gradient. Uh, to do that, press G or click the gradient tool and click and drag, oh, click on your rectangle first to turn it into a gradient and then click and drag from the top holding shift to create this gradient. To change the colors, click on the gradient panel here. If you don't see that, just head to windows, gradient, and that should pop out. And double click the first point down here, head to swatches and pick your first color and then do the same thing here, pick the second color. Uh, I think that looks really cool. And I'm just gonna change the vibe to be white. To do that, what you'll need to do is double click it. And then when you click it, you'll see that it allows you to change the color. Let's do that and then double click to head out of that editing mode again. So that looks very cool, I think. Um, you can also create a radial gradient. Let's do that again. Change this to white. And head to the gradient panel and change it to a radial gradient here. Let's maybe pull this pink out a little. There you go. So there's a few quick and easy ways to create a stylized typographic poster. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to hit subscribe for more tutorials like this. And if you wanna keep leveling up your design skills, check out this playlist right now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.